Warning, this video contains major spoilers to Puella Magi Madoka Magica. If you haven't watched the series until episode 10, I recommend you turn back now. If you have, well, enjoy! Hallo miteinander, I'm Geshady6 and this is Grief Syndrome. Well, only kind of. Our bonus episode will feature barely any new gameplay footage. Instead, we'll mostly just watch and talk about the gallery of endings. As I mentioned previously, there are 10 endings in total, and you must be wondering how a game as straightforward as Grief Syndrome has so many endings. There must be strict conditions, and yes, there are. What ending you get solely depends on which magical girl lives and dies throughout your playthrough. And here's our first one. As you may recall, this is the ending that we were awarded for the LP itself. It would have been a pretty good guess to say that Octavia needs to be beaten for this ending, but now you know that that's not the case. Saika and only Saika needs to die for it, because with her around, you wouldn't be seeing Octavia, the monster born from her corrupted soul. Yeah, it's really sad that a magical girl's struggle doesn't really achieve anything. They will only become what they want to protect people from. But Grief Syndrome, it doesn't see things so negatively. Things are all fine and dandy here. So how about some more nice things? This is the ending you get when everything goes perfectly, no casualties at all. So uplifting, it totally captures everything that Puella Magi Madoka Magica is about. Except not. You know, I don't actually mind that it's like this, since the series was meant as a travesty to the magical girl genre. It's only fair that Grief Syndrome is meant as a travesty towards Puella Magi Madoka Magica. Let's face it, you just can't capture what the series is about in an action game, even a good one. Now for the sake of variety, here's an ending that's kind of undesirable. You get this one if only Madoka dies. The strange figure on the very top that the other girls are charging at is supposed to be Krimhild Gretchen the witch that Madoka would turn into on the corruption of her soul. Now this appearance of Gretchen is the one that is only really prominent in fandom. She doesn't have just one canonical form to her, it's dependent on the timeline of the story. Here's what she is most commonly shown as. Reminds me a bit of Cousinette from the Addams Family. Anyway, the thing that's so bad about this ending is that in later timelines, Krimhild Gretchen may be powerful enough to bring the apocalypse, so things aren't looking good for the rest of the girls. Don't get Madoka killed, it's what the series is about, you know. The next one is more positive in comparison, but for me it's especially painful to see. The only one to kick the bucket this time is Mami. While the world may never be the same again without those lovely drills, Mami seems at peace and happy for the rest of the group. She has left them with the knowledge that even if no one else does, they'll never forget about her. Even though right now, they seem inappropriately jubilant to me. How dare you not mourn her, you little fuck! Moving on, if only Kyoko dies, you will get the polar opposite of the previous one. Kyoko has to lurk in heaven, knowing full well that the other girls don't care much for her. Yeah, she's not one to easily make friends. Might have been her technique, you know, trying to murder Sayaka at first sight. Not the best first impression. Still, I wish Kyoko a good time up there in heaven. May she cause many a food shortage there. Right at our halfway point, we have the first combination of fallen magical girls. If both Sayaka and Madoka die, Kyoko and Homura will buy plushies of their witch forms. I'm not sure if that's really what's happening, this one is definitely the hardest to interpret. But if that's really it, how did the manufacturer know what those witches look like? Can't really recommend anyone to buy these, you might be paying with your soul. The only thing that Mami would buy a plushie of seems to be Charlotte, but I don't know why she would like her all that much. What I do know is that Charlotte really likes Mami though. Yep, she could eat her right up. Alright everyone, bring those hands into face palming position because my two favorite ones are coming right up. Yeah, if only Sayaka and Kyoko are left alive at the end, they get married. In my eyes, Kyoko should have been the one with the groom's outfit, but oh well. There's one thing, yes, just one thing that makes me feel uneasy about this. 
Why do Mami, Madoka and Homura need to be dead for this bond to be possible? Maybe they were against it. Maybe they were in the way and had to be removed, if you know what I mean. But you know what? The next one is even better. Now only Madoka and Homura have survived the game and the way Madoka looks here doesn't seem like she actually approves of this union. Well, that is just too bad for her. With no one left to back her up against the ruthless Homura, Madoka was forced into a loveless marriage built on the still warm corpses of her best friends. Congratulations, this game is happy end. We were very close to wrapping things up and this next one is really sad. If Goldilocks is the only one to make it, you get this tragic scene where little orphan mommy is all alone once again. She may have all the tea to herself, but it will only taste bitter. As undesirable as this ending is, it is actually the hardest one to get. Not only does it feel like work to get the other characters killed in this game, and believe me, you're not gonna get this one unintentionally, but not a lot of people are actually good at handling Mami, and you have to beat the final stage as her. I'm mentioning this because no other ending constricts you to the use of just one single character. Of course, you could always just get it by playing on lap 1, which is for babies, since there are no lap requirements for these endings. None of them is objectively hard to get because of this. Last and kind of least, we have the wild card ending. You will see this for any combination of dead and living that hasn't been covered so far. Homura will wake up in the hospital again, having reverted the time flow once again. Looks like she'll have to give it another go and defy that future that she can't accept. I also tend to call this ending the dumb one, because you usually get it when something goes unplanned and you lose a character unintentionally. Funny thing about it though is that for a lot of the combinations to get it, Homura has to die. Now don't ask me how she travels through time after biting the dust, because honestly, I have no idea. Possibly because this game likes to be silly. By the way, seeing every ending at least once gets you a golden trophy. Yes, there are useless achievements in this game, visible in the pause menu. I never actually show them to you because A, they're the only bit of the game that's in Japanese, and B, they're irrelevant. Seriously, who brags about his trophies in Grief Syndrome? 90% of the people around you will just ask you, what the heck is Grief Syndrome? And with that little rant, we are done. I have shown you everything I wanted and could about Grief Syndrome. To wrap things up, I want to give you a short review of it. I like it. I really do a lot. Sure, it doesn't really capture what the series is about, but the visuals are so stylish, the action is just furious, and it feels like there's a lot of force behind everything you do in combat. The biggest weakness is easily the short length, and even the million difficulties of the game don't make it substantially longer. Still, because everything feels so nice and natural, you can quickly get into it again after having laid it aside for a while, and that just gives it a really good replayability. To me, it isn't quite the best game that Tasugara Frontier has ever done. That title would go to New Super Marissa Land. But still, I'd strongly recommend giving it a try if you like action platformers, beat em ups and hack and slash. It's got a bit of all of those. So this is the end. I hope you enjoyed our witch hunts. I'm Gesh86, this was Grief Syndrome, and next time something different. Probably so different that it won't even be a let's play, but hopefully it'll be worthwhile regardless. Bis bald!